Okay, I'm going to give a quick overview of the three pillars of programming without going into too much detail about why the code we will write works. The three pillars are sequence, selection, and repetition, and uh, I'll talk more about them as we go along here. I'm going to be using Python 2.7 in this demonstration, and I hope you will write the program with me. To install Python, if you haven't already got it installed, you're going to go to www.python.org and you're going to click on the downloads all right, and, and select either Windows or Mac depending on your operating system. All right, I'm going to be using a Mac, all right, but the code is the same whether you're using Windows or Mac. All right, so you will uh, click on the appropriate operating system, all right, and then you'll you'll get the latest release for Python uh, 2.7. All right, so you can pause the video here, and uh, once you get Python installed, uh, you can come back. Okay, so I'm assuming that you now have Python installed, and uh, we have to start it. We're going to be using Python today in what's called an interactive development environment and there's one that comes installed when you when you install Python alright and it's called idle so you're going to in the spotlight search or in the window search box you're gonna search for idle alright and when the program pops up alright you can click it to launch it alright should take just a couple seconds to to launch and uh, what we're looking at now is uh, what's called an interactive uh, shell. All right, and in the interactive shell, we can test little bits of code. Okay, so Python is a high-level language, which means it's designed to use English-like words or phrases uh, to make the code we write a little bit easier to follow and understand. All right, so if we want to do something like have hello printed to the screen all right we can just write the word print and then hello in quotation marks and when I press enter uh, the computer responds with hello okay so the shell is where we will uh, run our program once we've written it all right and to write our program what I'm going to do is go to the uh, file menu and select a new file and this will give us a blank canvas where we can start writing our code. And the first thing we should do is probably put a comment. So that starts with a hashtag. All right, and we'll tell whoever's reading this code uh, what it does. All right, so it's a number guessing game. All right, and what we're going to do is uh, we're going to let the computer randomly generate a number between 1 and 100 and then we're gonna try to guess it okay okay and so this brings us right to the first pillar uh, that I mentioned earlier and it's called sequence and that means that the code that you write gets executed in the order that it's written so line by line it gets executed as written. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to import this module called random. All right. And without going too deeply into that, that's going to allow us to uh, automatically generate a random number. Okay. And since the computer is going to have a number and we're going to guess a number, we're going to need containers to store those two numbers in. Okay. And I'm going to make one for the computer I'm going to call it the secret number okay and this is called a variable so these storage containers are called variables and I'm going to set that variable equal to this random module dot okay and within the random module there's something called a rand int or random integer and I want it to be between 1 and 100 Okay. All right, so we've generated a number for the computer. Now we need to have a number for you, and we'll call that the guess. 
And the first time when we first run the program, we'll set it equal to zero. So every time we run the program, all right, the computer gets a secret number. Your guess is zero. Okay. All right, and we're going to give you six tries to guess the computer's number. So I'm going to set another variable tries equal to zero as well. Okay. All right, so now we're ready to enter what's called a game loop. All right, so we're going to evaluate whether one or more conditions is true. When it's true, the game loop will continue, and it will continue until uh, our condition, conditions no longer evaluate to true. All right, and this brings us to uh, another pillar. It's called repetition. All right, so we're going to do the same thing over and over until something is no longer true. All right, this loop is going to be done with the while keyword. All right, so I'm going to follow the while keyword with uh, whatever conditions we want to test to see whether or not they're true. And what I'm going to do first is see if the guess is not equal. All right, so to ask if it's not equal, you'll see that I used the exclamation point or the bang connected to an equal sign. All right, so while it's not equal to the secret number, okay, we can enter the loop. All right, and then we also want to make sure that we haven't run out of tries. So I'm going to use the AND keyword and evaluate what tries is. And I'm going to make sure that it's less than six. Okay. So as we go through, right, we generate the number. Your guess is zero. Tries is zero. All right, I enter into the loop. All right, the guess must not be equal to the secret number, right, because the, the guess is zero at first, and the secret number, the lowest it can be is one. Uh, tries is also uh, less than six, right, because it starts as zero. Okay, and now we're ready to enter the loop. Okay, so in addition to the sequence of code, uh, Python also executes blocks of code, and the way it identifies blocks is by indenting the code. All right, so I'm going to end that line with a colon. I'm going to hit enter, and you'll notice that the cursor is indented. It needs to be indented. That's how Python identifies the block of code that we want to execute in this loop. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is let you guess, all right? And to let you guess, I'm going to set the guess variable equal to something else, all right? I'm going to get keyboard input from you, all right? So I'm going to use this input function, all right? That's going to allow that, and I'm going to prompt you to give me a guess. So I'll say, what is your guess? Okay, I'm going to add a space after that so it looks a little better when we when we run the program. Okay, and uh, after we get your guess, now we can start evaluating whether or not it is too high or too low. Okay, so I'm going to use the third pillar that I mentioned earlier called selection. A selection is done with if. All right, and so. Again, we're going to test whether some condition is true. All right, and what we want to do is first test if your guess is higher or greater than the secret number. Okay, and I need this colon. This is going to be another block within the while block. All right, if that evaluates to true, we want this to happen. We want to print that is true too high. Okay. All right. The other thing that can happen is your guess can be too low. All right. So I'm going to back out to the same level as the if. Very important that these things are all lined up. All right. And I'm going to write L if like else if guess is less than secret number. All right, if that condition evaluates to true, this is going to happen. We're going to print that is too low. 
Okay. All right, once you have guessed, once it's evaluated whether they're too high or too low, we will have used one of our tries. So I need to, again, get out to the same level as the guess if and elif. So all these things are lined up. Okay. And I'm going to write tries equals, okay. I'm going to increment it by setting it equal to itself plus one. Okay, so the first time through it's zero. Uh, we make our guess. We figure out if it's too high or it's too low. And now tries goes from zero to zero plus one, and it's one. Okay, so now we're ready for uh, the second time through the loop. Okay, all right, and there's just one more condition that we need to test to uh, make sure that um, that you haven't actually guessed the number. Okay, so I'm going to get all the way out to the left edge and I'm going to test that right now. So it's going to be if guess. All right, and when I'm assigning variables to a number, I use a single equal sign. All right, we already saw how to see if they're not equal. I use the exclamation and the equal sign stack together. All right, if I want to see if they are equal, I use two equal signs right together. All right, so when it's equal to the secret number, okay, we are going to print, we'll be shocked, so we'll say, holy cow, you guessed my number. We'll be really excited about that. All right, and uh, if you haven't guessed it, all right, you must be out of tries by now, so we'll use else. All right, so slightly different construction than up here. All right, I could have written it the same way up here, but I want to show you a couple of different things. All right, we're going to print, you know, better luck next time. All right, and... I'm going to print something right underneath it. Print the secret number was. All right. And I'll close that. I'll add a comma. All right. And then I'll type the secret number. So this tells Python to put these two things together. This string, which is a bunch of letters in between quotation marks. All right. And then this variable secret number. All right, so the comma tells it to print those on the same line and it will actually add a space in between them. Okay, so that's our whole game. The only thing we don't have is sort of an introduction to the game. So what I'm going to do is go right back up to the top here and add that in. Okay, and uh, right after the variable tries, I'm going to hit enter a couple times so I have an extra line and I'm going to print our introduction. Okay, it's going to be welcome to the number guessing game. Okay, I am thinking of a number between one and 100. I will give you six tries to get it. Good luck. Okay. So that's our whole program, and uh, we're now ready to test it and make sure that it works. So uh, what I'm going to do is first save it. Okay, and uh, I can call it the number game. All right, it's very important that it ends with dot .py. Dot pi so that uh, Python will run it, okay? So 
uh, once you have named it and you make sure that it has that extension .py on it, you can hit save. Okay, and uh, now we're going to test it. So I'm going to go up to the run men menu and I'm going to select run module and click that. Okay, so there's our introduction and uh, right away it asks us what's your guess. It's one in a hundred. So uh, I'll start in the middle with 50 and see how that works. So it was too high. Uh, I'm going to split the difference here between 1 and, and 50, pretty close to it. I'll go to 25. So it's too low. We know it's between 25 and 50. I'll try 35. That's too low. Uh, I'll try 45. And that's too high. So now I know it's between 35 and 45. I have two guesses left. I will try 40. Too high. Okay. Between 35 and 39, I will try 39 with my last guess. And I was wrong. So the number was 38. Okay. So that's our game. You can play as many times as you like. And uh, thanks for watching.